The background in this video is actual footage taken on the day I fished here at Maribone Lake. My name is John Fay and I'm a Middle Tennessee multi-species angler. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly where and how I caught my limit of catfish at a lake located just outside of Nashville. This TWRA lake is in a remote location, spring-fed, has a protected shoreline of trees and natural vegetation, and I do a lot of catch and release, but today I've come to this lake to catch catfish to take home and eat. I just have that much confidence in the cleanliness of the water in this lake. The water in this lake is clear, and fishing can be tough if you don't know how to fish the lake. So I'm going to start this video out with explaining the best time to fish this lake. Then I'm going to show you where I catch fish at this lake. I have two hot spots that I, that I normally fish at. And I consider a hot spot a location where you consistently catch fish. And there is a reason why fish are at those spots. Then I'm going to get into the video and kind of show you how I caught the fish. I can honestly say in this video, I'm doing something that most people don't do. I'm giving up my hot spots, two of them, and telling you how to catch fish there. So I'm asking you to do me a favor by clicking the like button on this video. It helps my YouTube channel out. And also, at the bottom of this video is a list of affiliate links where you can buy products that I use in this video. When you click that link and buy something, it helps my channel out because I get paid a small commission and you don't pay any more for the product. So it's a win-win. Now let's move forward. Maribone Lake, Jolton, Tennessee, May 6th, 20. 24. Now let's talk about when to fish Maribone Lake, which is important for this lake. You can see in the video the clarity of the water, and you can see that I'm fishing on a cloudy day. Fish do not like to be seen, so when the water is clear like it is at Maribone Lake, you're going to need to fish on a mostly cloudy day. If you can't fish on a cloudy day, then the lake is open at sunrise and closes at sunset, and you can fish in the morning at sunrise or in the afternoon just before sunset. But really, the ultimate way to fish this lake would be early in the morning or late in the afternoon on a mostly cloudy day. Okay, this is a Google Earth view of Maribone Lake and you'll come into Maribone Lake on Maribone Lake Road right here that's the only lake that the only road that leads to this lake and you'll cross the spillway and there's a fork fork to the left is a dead-end road it goes to some private property if you continue going straight you'll end up in the parking lot of the of Maribone Lake and there's a bait shop over there um, but to fish, fishing spot number one, um, it's right at the entrance. And there is a parking lot of about two cars. This spot is rarely fished, so this is usually open, these two spots. You can park here. There's a set of concrete steps that goes down the bank. This is kind of a steep bank, but there's concrete steps that goes down the bank, and there's a concrete ledge here. And you'll see in the picture, I'm fishing on that concrete ledge, and I'm fishing this area which is, has weed growth in the water. And so that's what's going on here. You got a bunch of weeds with minnows, big minnows, little minnows, big brim, small brim. And this, this is kind of deep out here. And the, the fish lay out here and they ambush the bait fish. So that's what's going on at hot spot, fishing hot spot one. I've caught fish there a lot of times and I do consider it a hot spot because there is a reason why fish are there. Now, heads up, 
that this is a TWRA managed fishing lake and you have to have a fishing license to fish here and you'll see a sign that tells you that you check in at the bait shop before you start fishing. And there is a small fee to fish this lake, just a few dollars that helps maintain the lake, hardly nothing. And uh, you know, you'll check in, you'll, you'll, unless you have a sportsman's license, now if you have the all-inclusive sportsman's license, that covers fishing and that covers the, the uh, fishing fee for this, these TWRA managed lakes. But if you don't, you'll have to go pay and get you a little permit to, to fish here for a day, just a few dollars. So that's hot spot one. Hot spot two is clear across the lake and you'll get to it by parking in the parking lot here. This is the bait shop. Go to the bait shop, walk past it, go between the bait shop and these boats, these rental boats here. You'll go between the but there and you'll end up at this point. Same thing going on here. It's a grassy area here. Grass in the water, minnows, um, big minnows, little minnows, big brim, little brim, and deep water out here. There's a frog population here at hot spot one. There's a lot of big rocks in the water, so there could be crayfish there. But that's what's going on with these two spots. That one, what makes them good is that the deep water, the fish lay in the kind of the deep water outside of those weeds and they ambush the bait fish. Okay, in this shot you see the bank in the area that I call fishing hot spot one. This concrete ledge, I think there used to be a fishing pier here years ago, but I'm not sure. Anyway, you'll see a grassy area in the water behind me and um, I will be fishing uh, in front of that grassy area a little ways out and I will be fishing seven foot six inches deep which will be just uh, the bait will be suspended just off the bottom maybe uh, two or three feet. In this video I'm getting ready to cast my line out. I'm using, using an adjustable slip float I have a number two alt mustad circle hook tied on and the bait I'm using is magic bait dough ball and let's just say it has a strong scent. I'll talk more about this bait later in the video. In this video scene you will see a fisherman's delight and that is a fishing float abruptly and forcefully being pulled under the water. In this video, you will see the importance of having a bank fishing net. This net is adjustable handle from 33 inches to 98 inches. And it's important to have one because when these catfish get close to the bank and their tail can hit the, the bottom of the lake, all kinds of erratic behavior starts happening. There's an affiliate link below this video that you can click and it will take you to Amazon where you can buy this fishing net. They're not very expensive and every bank fisherman should have one. In the net. Third catfish in the net. Third catfish in the net. Fourth catfish. Fourth catfish. Fourth catfish. Fourth catfish. Okay. Fifth catfish in the net. Fifth catfish in the net. I'm keeping the fish in a collapsible steel wire fish basket with floating top. And I have a cooler with ice in the car and I will ice down what fish I decide to keep. There is an affiliate link below if you would like to purchase a fish basket like this. Now moving on to hot spot number two which is behind the bait shop. I fished this area early in the morning and this is where I caught my first two catfish. You must fish this spot early in the morning and beat the crowd otherwise people arrive, make noise, vibration and this they scare the fish and this becomes a cold spot. You can see on the left hand side I have a rod in a rod holder 
this is fishing on the bottom. I had no success fishing on the bottom. So I used the same technique I used at hot spot number one using a slip float fishing about seven and a half feet deep. Heads up, there was a wooden fishing dock here at one time. It's recently been torn down, but there are some obstructions on the bottom. And if you fish on the bottom, you could get hung up. First catfish of the day. 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 The bait I used was magic bait, catfish bait, chicken liver, and chicken blood. And let me just say it has a strong scent. This magic bait is a dough ball. And this lake has a lot of stocked catfish that were raised in a hatchery. And I think that this dough ball suspended in the water to the catfish resembles the fish nuggets that they were fed at the hatchery. So I think that's part of the success of this bait here. Now I form the dough ball around the hook and I leave the point of the hook exposed so that I can get a hook up. I use a Mustad 2 alt circle hook and I use the model that is thin wire. There are a lot of advantages to using a circle hook, one of them being that it's designed to hook a fish in the corner of the mouth so you can easily remove the hook and you have less gut hooked fish and the fish live longer. Now if you're gonna sit this, if you're gonna sit your rod in a rod holder to get a hook up you need to reel in the slack line and let there be a kind of a tight line. If you're holding the rod and you need to set the hook, you lower the rod tip, point it towards the fish, and slowly reel in to get the hook up. Well, if you made it this far, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the notification bell. I have more fishing videos on the way and I plan to do a review of the dedicated rod and reel I have for slip float fishing.